If Paul Willett Twist or Stick meets Neil Horrigan and Lee Wallace, crazy directors at Elvis Communications. Hi guys. Hi. Yeah. How are you getting on? We're well, good, good, thank things. you. Good. Um, so if we can kick off with a bit of a summary of your career to date. Uh, okay. Um, we've actually been working together since uni for many, many, many years. Uh, and when we left there and uh, moved to London, we, sort of, we worked in a few agencies and spent a lot of time uh, above the line doing a lot of TV um, for many years, probably too long, and then uh, decided to branch out. So actually um, came to a small place called Elvis many yep. years ago. Um, stayed here for a couple of years before going off to Iris, um, working our way up there to Deputy Creative Directors before um, being invited back to Elvis and here we are. Cool. So why Elvis? Tell me, about, tell me a bit about what, what Elvis is all about. Well if your name's Elvis you kind of, uh, you've got to be good haven't you right? So, uh, yeah. so that, that's one reason why we're called Elvis. The other reason is, is that what we do is before Elvis came along, audiences sat watching a, a show or a concert, and they sat very quietly and behaved themselves, and uh, went back home, and they might have chatted about it between friends or family in the in the home. And what Elvis did, he came on the stage, and he gave it a little bit of a, <laughs> a move, didn't he? And and he turned audiences into fans. He made audiences feel something, and therefore do something. So they jumped off their seats, they threw the knickers on the stage, they did whatever, and that. And that's what we do here, is we make people feel something, we make people do something. And by doing that, you can turn audiences into fans. But you keep your clothes on. Oh, you keep your clothes okay. on. Yes. Fine, most of the time. Um, <laughs> so, best piece of career advice that you've been given throughout your career? I've been given a lot of bad advice. <laughs> um, one, I think one of the things that, that we always talk about is uh, be nice to the people on the way up, because you don't know yep. who you're going to bump into on the way back down, which is very true. The other one I think that we always say is always chase the work, don't chase the money. Um, we've given that advice a few times now and then we've, we've always reminded ourselves of that. So I think, yeah, chase the work, don't chase the money. Uh, and actually one more bit which, uh, which an old creative director used to say to us was know your worth. Yeah. Um, which is very, very true. Cool. So most inspirational person you've worked with all four? Well, <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, honestly, I'm sat next to one. Uh, you know, we worked together for. <laughs> Paid him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> we worked together since we left college, as, as Neil said, and um, yeah, I think that's part of being a team. You have to inspire each other every day, because I think as soon as you start to uh, get too used to each other and don't surprise each other and don't push each other, then it falls flat and there's no point in being a team, there's no point in having that team, team ethic. I think it's important that you inspire, you inspire each other every day. So that, I would say, he does it every day. Uh, I've got to say him that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, Obviously that, I, I echo everything uh, he just said. And I think, you know, you get asked these, these questions sometimes and there's a lot of industry greats and, uh, and there's a lot of legends out there that, that people reference and are, are very famous and, and all that's right and they are hugely influential but I think the really key people, that the people that keep us on our toes every day are the kind of the new guys that are coming through here. Certainly, you know, we've got a few, few guys here at Elvis which uh, they're just, their thinking is, is incredible and it's sort of, it should kind of scare you every day, and uh, and that is absolutely uh, inspiration to both of us. Definitely. Yeah, that, that's the advice you give to to any youngsters coming in. That's what you've got to do to people like us. You've got to inspire us. I mean, it's not about you being in awe of of those legends. I think you've got to learn from them, but at, at the same time, you've got the opportunity to inspire them. So that's the you know, that's what we that's the sort of people we look for. With your um, in terms of the great sort of briefs you've had a chance to work on, what what would you say is sort of the the biggest? brief you've had or the best brief you've had to date? Oh wow. Um, in our early days we had a, you know, when you could, you know, this is going back a while, when you could uh, advertise cigarettes, yeah. uh, <laughs> we had this brief from a, a, a Greek client uh, that was a Greek cigarette company and they wanted, uh, they asked us to come up with a campaign and by campaign they wanted a, like a 90 second cinema commercial, they wanted endless 48 sheets and their brief was, do something cool. We'd right. never met them, 
uh, we've just got an email, do something cool, massive budget, uh, off you go, and you've got like six weeks to do it. And uh, yeah, it was incredible. Great. Sometimes the hardest weeks are the ones where they are that open. Yeah. And then they are that big, and they're, they're the, you know, when things haven't been narrowed down, I think that, that's why that felt like a massive challenge. Yeah. Cool. Um, in terms of a bit of a summarisation of the industry at the moment, what would you, you, how would you summarise it in terms of the current state of the creative industry? I think uh, for me, I mean, it's it's massively exciting because we've got so much more media to play with now. Yeah. I mean, there's different things popping up all the time, and you know, Snapchat and Vines, and I mean, they didn't exist uh, you know, months months ago. Yeah. To be fair, the internet didn't exist when we were in the industry. So these things are all opportunities to be able to have a conversation with the, with the audience, and I think you know it, it's about grabbing those opportunities and and, uh, and making them work for you. I think I think so. It is exciting, ge generally. I mean. Clients are, uh, are taking less decisions, I think, um, and th they're needing more people, more proof that you could, that this is the right thing to do. But at the same time, you know, it just it, it means you've just got to work harder to prove to them that they're right and there are people out there that can help you do that. Uh, I think, um, you know, going back a few years, it was quite a passive audience, a bit like what mm. we were saying, you know, the, 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 the Elvis thing. Um, Nowadays, you've got to you've got to be disruptive. You've got to stand out. You've yep. got to do something different. You've got to you've got to get noticed, and you've got to find a way to do that. And uh, uh, and that can be pretty tricky. But the, as Lee said, the um, it's so broad where you can do that. It, it it becomes really exciting. If you could speak to a younger Neil, a younger younger Lee, mm -hmm. when they're leaving university, um, what advice, if any, would you give them? Younger Neil, Stick let's together. I'll say, <laughs> don't use so many hair products because uh, yeah. you never know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, a younger us. I, I would say that make sure that you, like I think what we did, uh, our first agency, we went in and then we did a lot of exciting TV projects, but I think we probably stayed there too long okay. um, and I think you've got to always be aware that you're broadening your skill base you're making sure that you know you, you have your definite goals and I think we, we were just happy to be there for, for too long. I think um, when you get your foot in the door and it's important to, that's your first task to get your foot in the door but once you once you do that you know where you're going. Yeah. Don't and, get uh, comfy. Yeah it's, it's really yeah. easy to get comfy and uh, it's a lovely place to be and you're in, you made it and it's, it's wonderful but yeah you've got, to, you've got to keep challenging yourself every day, every week. In terms of what inspires you guys um, what inspires you particularly? Is there anything you've seen recently or anything you've read or what particularly inspires you guys? Uh, for me, I always, I always, uh, it's, it's weird how he does it, but I always go to Dave Trot's blog. Okay, um, yeah. And whenever I go to sit to, to trot his blog, it's like he knows where I'm feeling at the time. So if I'm feeling a bit low or I'm struggling with a brief or a client's being difficult or, or whatever, he knows exactly the right advice to give me at the time. It's kind of weird, but he does it. And so, so he's my first port of call for any kind of inspiration. Yeah, and, and when, you know, when there's two of you, you know, if, if you're under it a bit or you're a bit stressed and you know, the other person can bring calm and Lee comes out with these things, you just go, yeah, you're right. And I think this guy's amazing. He's <laughs> yeah. like, Dave that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> Um, if you were in the industry, um, mm -hmm. what do you think you'd be doing? <gasps> wow. Um, actually, we, when we were trying to get into the industry, we worked out that uh, the advertising industry was the 17th best job in the world. <laughs> and we actually wrote a list about all the jobs and it came number 17th and, and striving for 17th was actually a good thing. Um, <laughs> and we were, you know, we feel, feel privileged to, to to be in at number 17, but if not, I guess we'd go for some of the other 16, of which there was like... Ice cream taster, pastry photographer, Ferrari test drivers, footballer, astronaut. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I think... One of them would just do one of One of those would do, but um, we're in a pretty good position at number 17. <laughs> That's not bad. Um, brands, you've worked on some good brands. Um, if you could work on any other brand that you haven't worked on, that you'd like to get your teeth into, is there any one that sort of jumps out that you'd love to to pitch for and get into Elvis? I think for us... We, we actually, you haven't already got one. We, 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 we spoke about this the other day, actually. It's, it's not so much... I mean, we've, uh, we've worked on a lot of 
different stuff over mm -hmm. the years, but the, the stuff that's really rewarding, which I'd, we'd love to do more of, is charity work and okay. um, there's a lot of new startups and new businesses coming through and if you can kind of work with them at an early stage, it's so much more fulfilling and enriching because you're helping build their business for them. And yep. So it's not so much a, a, a brand that is, uh, has got the de desire, it's more the type of business which uh, we think is quite rich and I'd love to do a bit more of both of those. Yes, yeah, where you can see your work is actually making a big difference. So when, if it is a charity, obviously that's pretty obvious, but if you've got the startup, yeah. you've got somebody you know, who's got their business and they've got all that energy and they want to, they want to make something of, 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 the, of their brand, and you come along and you can help them do that and you see that grow, that's phenomenal for us. Any particularly funny moments that you, you guys can remember from pitches or any awkward moments? That you care to tell us about. You don't have to. You don't have to even tell us. Tell me if you don't want. Well, I'll let me see. I Yeah, I mean, what, one one Keep sort of well. jumps out. Um, we did a pitch for a well-known Alco Pop, um, and I, it was myself and the CEO. It was when we were working at Elvis the first time. Right. And um, our idea involved uh, an inflatable character that you would go out drinking with. Right. You would show this inflatable character a good time. Yeah. Yeah. The, the end line was like, "Don't let him down," because it was yeah, this inflatable. It was all about. Right. Yeah. 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 Very. Yeah. That was the idea. But in order to sell it in, we had to we take the inflatable character, right. the inflatable man, and the only inflatable man that we could get was a sex doll, sex doll. <laughs> so, we, so we had to tape up his bits, put a t-shirt on him, and I had him in a bag. So to, you imagine I'm sat there Blown waiting to meet there. some big wigs for this um, alcohol, alcohol pop and knowing that I've got a sex doll yeah. in a bag that I've got to show to them. So that for me was just uh, scary, awkward, funny, all those things. And it, it looked like Roger Moore. Yeah, it did. Which was weird. Um, <laughs> I, I, did a, I did a pitch once for, a, again, a, a, well, a well-known mobile phone company in, right. in Munich. Yeah. And I went over there expecting to pitch to a couple of people, walked into a room of at least 30 people on one long table and I had to stand at the end uh, on my own and talk about the, these ideas and the people went so far back down the table I could see at the end people <laughs> on their phone and on their, on, their mob, uh, on their laptops and I couldn't hear them, that's how far away they were, so they clearly couldn't hear me and it was just, it was the worst oh room. And every idea I gave to them, they would tell me there and then what they thought, how bad they thought it was. Bloody hell. It was, yeah. That didn't go we well. We did get one through, didn't we? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you had a um, magic wand and you could grant you one wish, you could change anything at all about the industry, um, what would you change? change? I think, I touched on it before, I think it would be nice to get people to trust their gut more yeah. and uh, and if they feel that it's the right decision to go for it. I think we have a lot of uh, people needing to, um, needing proof from other, from, from other people or, or uh, research or, and there, there's nothing wrong with all those things uh, yeah. but there's just a lot of that and I yeah. think some people know it's the right answer, they just need it done before we can actually do it. So it's, I, 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 if that's what I would do, I, I would get them to go more on their, on, on uh, their gut and, and, and what, what they feel is right rather than actually having to prove it before we do it. Yeah, they, uh, they say that a, a camel is a horse designed by committee and, uh, and that's because so many people get involved that generally it becomes quite a difficult process and it is the nature of our business but it's one of those things that you never get you still never find a way to sort of deal with it because it becomes quite frustrating. But yes. I think maybe that, if we could uh, do something about that, would be great. Cool. Right, quick fire rounds. Okay. Yeah. Um, Favourite current ad campaign? Uh, I like the one for, with the ogre, um, Thompson's. Yeah. Is it Thompson's? Is it Thompson's? I don't know. Uh, it's Thompson's or Thomas Cook. What's his that? <laughs> Simon, it's Simon the Ogre, isn't it? I really love that. Yeah. But the fact that I don't know who it's for, it's probably not a good thing. <laughs> it's Thomas Cook, I think. Is it really? I can say. Maybe I'll pick something else. Can you Fine. just ask that again? <laughs> no, you, you just yeah, thought. favourite current ad campaign. Know, I Lee, I need come to on. think about it. Um, <laughs> favourite campaign of all time, then? 
favourite campaign of all time, I think, for, uh, probably goes back to when we were sort of getting into the industry around the time that uh, Tango work was happening. I think my, yeah. one of my favourite ads of all time is probably the Black Current Tango ad with yeah. Sebastian, the French student. And I, I think for us, you know, again, we, we've been in the, the industry quite early and, um, and we were quite young and that was just so inspiring. It's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, execution-wise, that, that is amazing. But for me, strategically-wise and, and, and insight-wise, you cannot fault my mind coming out and saying you either love it or you hate it. Yeah. You know, and I love those insight-driven things. I love the fact that everyone knows that and the client is brave enough to go and do it. So I think there's a, it's a big tick for everybody that's been involved in that. Yeah. Double espresso or green tea? Double espresso. Double always. espresso. It's a necessity. Most creative person you've worked with, probably already answered that one. Possibly. I go to say <laughs> say you're indoors. <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> independent or network? Oh independent. Independent, yeah. Money or happiness? Happiness. Yeah, one hundred percent happiness. All the way. Who wears the trousers in your ongoing relationship? Definitely me. <laughs> Without debate, definitely <laughs> me. <laughs> Not true. Fine. <laughs> um, twist or stick? Twist. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Pleasure.